There are too many iconic Simpsons moments that we all know and love, but in a show that has had a 30 year run, they can't all be perfect. Mixed in with the good moments have been some of the show's darkest moments that had fans upset and the creators regretting their decisions. That's what I'll be covering on today's most amazing top 10 list. Starting off this list at number 10, we have the Simpsons and Family Guy crossover episode. This episode was long awaited by many of the fans and hopes were high, but boy did they disappoint. While this episode aired as part of a Family Guy season, it of course involved a lot of the people who work on the Simpsons production, including almost all of the members of the main Simpson voice cast. This episode came under fire from critics who were displeased with some of the violent humor, the use of sexist jokes, as well as the fact that the episode featured a rape joke. The AV Club even called the episode the worst TV of 2014 under worst crossover. They also wrote about the episode's sexy car washing montage that featured Homer and Peter in denim cutoffs and tied up white t-shirts saying that while the show prides itself on cutaway gags, this was its most successful lookaway gag. In our number 9 spot today we have the Regina Monologues episode. Before I jump into this one, if you're liking the video so far, please don't forget to hit that like button. In this episode from season 15, we see our beloved Simpson family travel to Britain where we get cameos from JK Rowling, Sir Ian McKellen, and of course the British Prime Minister at the time, Tony Blair. This episode was criticized for the use of the Prime Minister and left people asking if maybe he could have had better use of his time than appearing in an animated TV series. While this was more of a criticism of the Prime Minister's actions rather than the actual content of the episode, it definitely isn't what the show's creators were going for when they envisioned the episode's response. When it eventually came time for Tony Blair to step down and his successor, Prime Minister Gordon Brown, took office, there were a lot of rumors of a repeat of this mistake. Luckily, the show's creator, Matt Groening, confirmed that they would not be featuring the new British British Prime Minister in an episode, joking that the rule is only one per century. It's understandable why people were upset to begin with, but you have to give people credit for learning from their mistakes. Coming in at number 8, we have a dark moment from season 13 in an episode titled The Blunder Years. This dark moment comes closer to the end of the episode where we see a blast from the past with Mr. Burns holding a baby Smithers. Smithers Sr, who is of course Smithers father, walks into an unstable nuclear reactor core in order to try and stop a meltdown. This subsequently leads to his death as he succumbs to the radiation. Mr. Burns and baby Smithers witness the whole thing and Mr. Burns even describes what is happening to Baby Smithers. It's a pretty uncomfortable moment. Even though it's unlikely that Baby Smithers would be able to remember this moment as he got older, it's still a traumatic event that he had to witness that I'm sure stayed with him. In our number 7 spot today, we're taking a look at season 4, episode 2, titled A Streetcar Named Marge. In the episode, we see Marge in a musical based off of the play A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. The musical opens with a number in the tune of There's there's no place like London from the musical Sweeney Todd. As a musical theater nerd myself, this seems like it would be my kind of episode, but when the lyrics began to mention New Orleans, this is when things started to go south. Before the episode was released, the producer sent this episode as well as one other to critics. A New Orleans critic reviewed the episode and published the lyrics in an article before the episode aired. The city's residents were rightfully upset at the song's depiction of them, but the out of context look definitely didn't help. Some of the lyrics went as far as to call the residents pirates and drunks. After the episode aired, there were hundreds of complaints about the song, which caused the president of Fox at the time Jamie Kellner to have to make a statement. For number 6, we are staying on theme with places who felt attacked by the Simpsons, this time taking it to season 6, episode 16, called Bart vs. Australia. As you might have guessed, this episode takes place down under, and shortly after airing had many Australians feeling insulted. While not all Australians were particularly offended by this episode, the Simpsons staff received hundreds of letters, with a mix of complaints saying anything from the accents used on this episode were more South African than Australian, to calling the episode a mockery of their country. The Newcastle Herald's Jamie Joyce said that he agreed Australia had faults, like any other country, but laughing in their face and then mocking their heritage was definitely not called for. He then went on to say that it embarrassed and degraded the country and made them look like total idiots. David Merkin, who was the episode's producer, responded to the backlash by saying that it was intentional.
intentionally inaccurate, citing that it was the show's evil side coming out. In our number 5 spot today we are bringing it to season 13, episode 15 in an episode titled Blame It On Lisa. You'd think the show's creators would have learned from their past mistakes, but alas. In this episode we see the family take a trip to Brazil, but this trip quickly takes a dark turn when Homer gets kidnapped by a gang. Of course people saw this and felt like the show was painting Brazil in a bad light, making people feel like it would be an unsafe place to visit. The president, Fernando Enrique Cordoso, called it a distraction distorted view of Brazilian reality, and even the tourist board of Rio de Janeiro threatened to sue. They said that it would undo the millions of dollars worth of campaigning they did in order to get people to visit their city. I can totally understand why they felt like this, as tourism rates can have a huge impact on a place's economy. Hopefully this third mistake is the last of its kind. At number 4 today we have a season 1 moment. The very first season of The Simpsons did an amazing job at setting the scene for the years and episodes to come, but there are a lot of dark moments in the first season. One of the most notable dark moments comes in the third episode. It's the first time we see Homer lose his job at the nuclear power plant. We wish that we could go back in time and let him know that this is just the first of many job losses for Homer, but this one really hits him hard. In fact, it hits him so hard that we see him say goodbye to his family, leave a note, and make plans to commit suicide. To take it one step further, as Homer begins to act on his plan, we see him struggling to carry a rock to the bridge. When his next door neighbors see this, instead of doing anything helpful, they make a joke about Homer's dire state. It's a super depressing moment that really makes me wish I could just go and give him a hug and let him know that everything is going to be alright. At number 3 today we are checking out an episode called Homer's Enemy from season 8. This episode shows a new employee named Frank Grimes who gets hired at the power plant and he begins working alongside Homer. Frank is a hard worker so of course he is shocked by how lazy Homer is. We then see Homer almost take a sip of sulfuric acid before Frank comes in to save the day knocking it from Homer's hand. The acid burns a hole in the wall where it splashed, and when Mr. Burns sees this, he blames Frank and reduces his pay. This is the last straw for Frank, and he declares himself and Homer as enemies. We see them feud for the rest of the episode, but the end is where it really turns dark. In a fit of rage, we see Frank grab some high voltage wires with no protection, which ends up electrocuting him to death. We then cut to Frank's funeral, and we see Homer sleeping. With a drool hanging out of the side of his mouth, we hear Homer mumble something in his slumber, which ends up making everyone who attended the funeral, and even the reverend, laugh as Frank's casket is lowered into the ground. Even though Frank and Homer had a feud, this is a pretty dark moment and shows just how little they cared for him. In our number 2 spot we have a moment from season 19 in an episode titled Papa Don't Leech. The episode opens with Homer and Grandpa traveling together in a car when they get run off the road and over a cliff by Patty and Selma who are traveling in the opposite direction. Homer gets out of the car to see an extremely injured Grandpa who asks him to call an ambulance. Homer begins to dial 911 until he realizes that Grandpa's recovery and care will mostly be placed on his shoulders. He then shuts the phone and smothers Grandpa with his own hands. After this moment we get snapped back into reality and see that it was just a dream that Homer was having, but then he goes on to complain about waking up, saying that he was having the most wonderful dream. This is definitely a very dark Homer moment that made me see him in a different light. At our number one spot today, we have a couch gag controversy. If you're a Simpsons fan, you know all about their long running couch gag as it is one of their signatures. It was a big moment for production when they landed the underground artist Banksy to design one for the episode titled Money Bart. The episode features a minute long visual where the artist depicted a sweatshop in which people were manufacturing Simpson merchandise, which was intended to be a commentary on capitalism. While fans and critics of the show weren't upset over the episode, some of the animators were upset over how they and their working conditions were portrayed. Nelson Shin, who is the founder of the Korean company Acom, which animated animates The Simpsons said he found it excessive and offending. He said that most of the content was degrading people from Korea, China, Mexico and Vietnam and that if Banksy wanted to critique these things, he should learn more about it first. When the creators were super 
super excited about this collaboration, I doubt that they had this potential upset in mind. Of course the animators are one of the biggest and most important parts of the show, so upsetting them definitely wasn't the best thing for the other creators. Alright guys, that has been our list for today, thank you so much for checking it out, I've been your host Olivia Kozlowski and I'll see you next time.